Hey Elevation Church, I'm Sunny if you haven't met me before and uh, to be continuing on with our miracle series today I'm going to be talking about uh, a miracle which I'm sure you heard of before uh, we see Jesus do this uh, a few times actually throughout the New Testament right it's uh, it's where he drives out impure spirits from people and so this specific miracle is where he uh, drives out an impure spirit from a man and uh, the passage actually comes from Mark 1 verses 21 to 28 and so if you haven't heard it I highly recommend you go look into it there is so much gold you're going to get out of it and so the story starts off in verse 21 uh, where Jesus walks into a synagogue uh, on a Sabbath in Capernaum and he begins to teach, right? And then it says in verse 22 that as Jesus was teaching, people around him in the synagogue were astonished with the authority with which he taught because it wasn't like the scribes uh, who were teachers of the law, right? And so in verse 23, it says that as Jesus was teaching, there was a man there with an unclean spirit and he yells out to Jesus and he says, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And all Jesus does next is he says, be quiet, come out of him. And immediately the unclean spirit convulsing the man and crying out with a loud voice came out of the man. And then they were all amazed that they questioned amongst themselves saying, what is this? A new teaching and with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Now, I don't know about you, right? But one of the first thoughts that uh, sort of came to mind as I was preparing for this and as I was rereading this passage, I sort of um, instantly marveled at Jesus's effortless authority over evil. And I'm guessing I was sort of acting a little bit like those people in the synagogue who didn't know Jesus, who were astonished by His authority, right? And naturally it makes sense. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And so they were not aware of His authority. So if we look at this word authority that pops up uh, a couple of times in this passage, it actually comes from the Greek word exousia, right? And what exousia means is, it is the sovereign freedom of one who acts without any hindrance. Let me read that again. So it is the sovereign freedom of one who acts without any hindrance, right? Now that part without any hindrance is what gets me the most. It's such an incredible reminder that we serve God who, who nothing can get in His way, right? He works without any hindrance, nothing can stop Him, not even evil. You know, last year I, uh, I experienced my first miracle that Jesus ever did. Uh, in, in my life and uh, I found myself at a prayer meeting and someone prayed over me and Jesus instantly healed me from what the doctors believed at the time was uh, the start of rheumatoid arthritis. Now rheumatoid arthritis, it's an inflammatory uh, arthritis which can affect several joints, right? So it started off uh, in my fingers and then gradually started spreading to my knees and my toes and, and even my back and I was in severe pain and it was restricting my ability to do a lot of things. Uh, my ability to use my hands and even my feet to a certain extent and so I was in severe pain but Jesus instantly miraculously healed me, right? But in the lead up to this miracle, I never thought I'd ever experience Jesus' miraculous healing power in my life. I thought, what are the chances? Probably not for me, you know, um, the probability is very small. That's what I thought to myself. But growing up, I'd seen, you know, I'd seen um, Jesus perform the miraculous in people's lives. Uh, several times and growing up in Sri Lanka as well, I'd seen people free, uh, set free from the demonic, but I treated the miraculous in my life as, uh, as almost a far-fetched reality, right? And it was not until I sort of acknowledged, hey, hang on a sec, Jesus actually has the power to heal me. That's when I experienced the miraculous, right? But the sad thing is, even after I'd experienced Jesus' miraculous healing power, I let doubt creep in. I would constantly check my joints to make sure I was healed. And this went on for a few weeks and it felt like it was a couple of months actually. I'd just, you know, make sure that I had no pain. I was like, oh my gosh, is my sickness gonna come back? And there were even a couple of instances where um, I was a little bit afraid, a little bit hesitant to go public with my healing testimony because I thought, oh my gosh, what if I tell people? What if my sickness came back again? Has God really healed me? Would I not look silly if I went public about it? I was trusting sickness over God's authority over sickness even after He'd shown me the miraculous. I was creeping into that same pattern of rationality in the lead up to receiving my miracle. 
You see, rationality, it dominates our 21st century postmodern culture, right? It is everywhere. We glorify it, we praise it. And you know, if you can explain a complex situation and it's within human understanding, you're instantly labeled as an, as an intelligent, rational individual. But sadly, if it goes beyond your understanding, you're seen as a little bit naive, a little bit loopy, sometimes even called stupid. And as Christians, when we're waiting on miracles, what we tend to do is we slap it, slip into rationality as our first resort and leave God's authority to work the miraculous as a last resort. We're so caught up in our own rationality. Even the man, even, even the man with an evil spirit, even evil acknowledges God's authority and it obeys, which as we saw, instantly results in the miraculous, right? But too often than not, as Christians, we're caught up acting like those who don't know Jesus. We act surprised, we act astonished. And sometimes when we see or when we hear people where God's performed the miraculous, we go, did that really happen? Was that really Jesus? Are you sure it wasn't something else? Can the miraculous really happen for me? What are the chances? Let me calculate the probability. You know, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus tells us that uh, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him, right? Everything sits under his authority. He created authority. He is authority. And that word exousia, he has a sovereign freedom to act without any hindrance because he owns all authority, right? Too often than not, we find ourselves giving that place of authority to something else, whether that be our own rationality, whether that be different voices in our lives, our friends, our peers, uh, our boss, our careers. And sometimes you can even be a human like your, your, like your leader, like your own spiritual mentor. And then we wonder, where is my miracle? You know, sometimes before God can work the miraculous in your situation, He just might be waiting for you to acknowledge His authority to work the miraculous. I don't know where you're at, right? I don't know whether you're a little bit like me and you're in the lead up to receiving your miracle and you're finding yourself giving to that same pattern of rationality, you're caught up in your own ability to rationalize. Or I don't know what kind of miracle you're waiting on, whether that be a healing, a restoration, a, a miraculous financial provision, a, a breakthrough on, on addiction, and you've probably tried every rational thing that you can think of and nothing's working out for you. Let me ask you this, if you are waiting on a miracle and if you haven't already, What's stopping you from acknowledging God's authority to work the miraculous in your situation as a first resort? Now, I hope I've left you with something to think about. We'll see you next time.